everyone. Uh, welcome to today's episode of Studio Jake, and I've got a huge uh, special guest for us. We've got uh, Kathleen Antrim, who is the author of Capital Offense. But before we get in, I wanted to make a huge apology to Will Arnett. He, uh, um, in my previous episode, I reviewed the Lego Batman uh, movie, and I kept saying Patrick Wilson was the voice of Batman. I want to apologize to Will Arnett. You are the voice of Batman, and you did a fantastic job. So with that out of the way, stop emailing me and Twittering me. I'm sorry. Now we're going to get back to uh, our interview. So I've got, like I said, I have Kathleen um, Antrim with us, and she is a thriller writer, and she's also the one of the co-presidents of International uh, Thriller Writers, and also she has done some work with the USO. And so we're very excited to have her uh, with us. Welcome, Kathleen. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to be here today. So um, tell us a little bit about your book, uh, Capital Offense. What exactly, uh, just for my uh, viewers, what exactly is it about? Um, who's the main character? And what is, what is the uh, situation going on with him or her? Sure. So um, Capital Offense is a political thriller. And it's based on the concept of the first lady plotting to overthrow the president. And we have um, a very experienced journalist in Jack Rudley, who loses his father, who's a senator, um, as part of the price of what's going on in Washington with all the dirty politics. And he has to discover what's going on. And in the meantime, we've got um, the First Lady, um, like I said, plotting to overthrow the president. And perhaps she has good reason to do so. Oh, wow. So um, is there, um, I honestly haven't, I'm into politics, but I actually hasn't haven't researched this. Is there a way for, like, the first lady to become like the president? Like, can she be the designated survivor um, in a situation? Or <laughs> well, if she were a, mem a member of cabinet, and there actually was a law passed um, after the JFK administration um, against nepotism. Oh. However, however, if the person in the family that would um, could be appointed has a skill set or some reason why they really are the most qualified far above anyone else. They actually could still be appointed. So there is that stipulation. However, um, it would be very difficult. Um, the first lady in my book, um, how it happens is a legal way for it to happen. Um, however, I'm not going to give the ending away on what. <laughs> You know, as with all books, when we do our research, you want to be accurate in your research, accurate in what you're using in the book, and um, yeah, otherwise the readers will not suspend disbelief. They'll be upset with the book and feel cheated. So very important to keep the facts accurate. Yeah, I remember I, I read a book a while back. It was about it was kind of a what if book called Great Victory about what if the South had won the, the war of, of uh, or as, as it was called in the book, the War of Northern Aggression, and. Um, in the book, uh, pres yeah, I know, President Davis is planning on running re-election. Well, if you're familiar with history, the Confederate in the Confederacy Constitution, they actually banned the president from running re-election. He can only serve one, I think it was six-year term. They made it similar to a senator. So you're absolutely, and, and that immediately, me being a, uh, a, someone who's familiar with U.S. history, that immediately turned me off to the book. So I was like, oh, that's not even possible. That, you know, that, that doesn't make any sense. So, but... Uh, why, why did you choose a reporter as your main character? Um, I'm not exactly sure why. To be honest with you, I, I know that my characters come to me and they are who they are when they develop. And I always like to say on the first day when I meet them and they start to come together in my mind, it's kind of like having coffee with somebody for the first time and you get to know them and you decide whether you like them or not at that point. And so then if you do like them, you decide to spend more time with them. And that's how it is throughout a book. When I write a book, the more I get to know them, the more I understand who they are, what they would do. Because I, I outline books, but I have to stay flexible because, like I said, as I get to know those characters, I might get to a point in the book that I've outlined where they're going to take a right turn. But now that I know them better, I realize, you know, they would not take that right turn. They'd take a left turn. So, yeah, I always have to stay flexible. But um, I can't – there wasn't any specific um, – reason why he was a reporter per se there was a reporter at the time during the clinton administration i found very fascinating and he um really stood up to the administration at that time and did a lot of 
and then suffered a lot of consequences for doing a lot of research and doing some pretty, pretty, uh, I guess, can I say ballsy investigations? And so I, I, you know, I think he probably was kind of in the back of my mind and brought forward in this character. Now, this must have taken, man, I don't know, days of hours, maybe even weeks of research um, to do it. Uh, what Exactly, um, when you were doing this research, what kind of sources were you looking for, um, you know, with the, uh, you know, when you're looking to describe your characters and their situations, like, um, how long and what was the process like trying to develop this, uh, this whole concept? Uh, it takes me about a year to write a goal and even though this one is set back a little bit um i reached i did a ton of research for the book and interviewed a lot of people in the national uh, political scene and actually the book was inspired by hillary clinton it is not her i want to make that very clear she is not the first lady plotting over the president but she was so overt in her power in the white house and I, it, so she made me very curious because she's the first first lady throughout history who actually had an office in the West Wing. All of the first ladies have always been in the East Wing. And the West Wing's not that big. I don't know if you've been there, but it's not that big. So um, for her to have an office just down, down from the president was a very big deal. And at that time, she wanted to spearhead health care. And, of course, there was the cause of a big political scandal, and it didn't happen at that point. But um, she was very overt in her power. So I started researching first ladies to find out what kind of oversight they had and discovered that first ladies throughout history have been very powerful. Edith Bowling Wilson actually ran the country when Woodrow Wilson suffered a paralytic stroke. So she is actually our first female president. Um, she, she literally ran the country. Um, people didn't know it. It was obviously kept very hush hush. She and the, her and Woodrow Wilson's doctor, the only two that knew it at the time, um, she would go into Woodrow's room with a, you know paper and come out with it signed. That kind of yeah. yeah. Um, but so I started looking at how powerful they are, and they've been incredibly powerful. And there is zero oversight. So when you look at that, you know, Congress does not regulate first spouses, does not regulate first families. And you start to realize they have access to all the kingmakers, they have access to the money, they have access to the media, incredible power, zero oversight. And actually, I think a concept that's really interesting is if Hillary had won, for example, we would have had Bill Clinton back in the White House as, white, as her spouse. Because the president, he knows all the secrets, he knows how everything runs, everything, and no oversight. That's, that's a, license a license to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, I was intrigued with that, that, and that's what really brought the book, brought the book about. about. And I started, doing, I started doing a lot of research. I actually interviewed um, people from, from cabinet, cabinet positions, positions etc., et to really get, to a, really get a handle on all of it. Wow, that's incredible. The and um, when uh, I guess my last question about the book specifically is: When did you uh, come up with this idea? What made you go, "Hey, I want to. I'm going to." Uh, pursue this um, I'm going to pursue this idea of um, kind of a political intrigue within the White House you know what when did you uh, was it a particular news story that you saw or did you just think hey this is kind of a cool concept I don't think anyone's uh, done it quite this way you know it developed, you know, it developed over time I would look at newspapers and still do to this day and say you know what if it, you know, what if it isn't what this what if what's really going on, on is XYZ and so I've, and so I've often questioned, questioned authority questioned, questioned our press and um, have, a journalism, have a journalism and correspondent and commentary, and commentary background, background. Um, so I know how things go and, and they aren't always honest and truthful unfortunately in our media which is one of the reasons I left it but Looking at that, and over time, starting to see the power of, for example, Hillary Clinton, and I was so intrigued by all that. It just, it just kind of came together over time as I developed it. Who would you say your influences are as a writer? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I have studied under amazing writers, um, and it really, it would encourage other authors um, to do whatever they have to do to go to certain conferences to study under authors. I've Studied under John Saul, Elizabeth, Elizabeth George, George, Terry Brooks, Allison. Dorothy Allison, um, and literally been in classes for four and five days um, with them as instructors uh, individually over time. 
And um, we have a big conference in New York City called Thriller Fest. This year will be July 10th through the 16th. And two days of that week are called Craft Fest, and they focus on the craft of writing. And to me, those are the two most important days of the week. And literally, we have New York Times and bestselling authors teaching all the aspects of craft, from voice to conflict to dialogue, you name it. It's being you know taught there. And we bring in all kinds of experts. We have a day with the FBI on the Monday of that week where you can go and literally spend a day uh, with New York um, FBI office. And, um, yeah, all kinds of great things. But I really think as an author and as a writer, you have to search um, for educational opportunities because it's not really available at the university setting. And uh, you're actually one of the co-presidents, right, of, of the – of the conference? A past, a past, yes, I'm a past okay, co-president. Um, um, yes, 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 I was on the board of directors for quite a long time. I actually ran Thriller Fest for about five, for about five years. years. Um, I no longer have any affiliate. I mean, I'm still part of the International Thriller Writers, ITW, but I don't run the conference. And now the conference has gotten to a size of about twelve to 1,500 people. They do a fantastic job with it. They program over 300 authors, and I just – Cannot speak, cannot speak highly enough of it because it's really an opportunity to learn a lot. And yes, I was past president. Um, let's see, I think I turned out two years ago. I was past president with Lee Child and before that with Douglas Preston. And um, we get a lot of headliners at the conference because the thriller genre is so big. And Lee Child, he just wrote a memoir, didn't he? No, no, no. He's um, the Jack Reacher franchise. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was getting them mixed up. Man, I, that was a, yeah. I'm an author, yeah. I'm a writer, I should know this. <laughs> You're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so um, the Jack Reacher, Reacher, Reacher movies with Tom Cruise, Cruise that's Lee, Lee, those are Lee's. Um, um, Doug Preston, um, his, his latest book is um, um, The Monkey God, and, right. okay. and it's on the New York Times. Yeah, it hit number yeah, it hit one. Number one. I think yeah, I'm getting that. It was a longer title. I think I've got that right. But um, and then he writes um, the Pendergast character with um, Lincoln Child, Lincoln Child and Doug Preston. But we have a lot of those writers teaching at Thriller Fest and at Craft Fest. For example, David Morrell, who created Rambo, he teaches, and um, all kinds of you know really big name writers who are teaching it. They they're not only doing it, but they're able to teach it. No, at Thriller Fest. Um... Because there's a lot of I, thriller kind of isn't just a genre on its own. It can seep like into like a political thriller, or you have science or a fantasy thrillers like what Terry Brooks does. Um, is is there something for everyone um, at at Thriller Fest? Absolutely, absolutely. At uh, first, I would say good story is good story. I don't care what genre he's writing. And learning craft it applies to all genres. And so I would not tell anyone to hesitate even if they're writing romance or no matter what they're writing they can learn a lot at this conference under these instructors um but yes the thriller and suspense umbrella is huge we have paranormal suspense legal thrillers um as you said fantasy we have romantic suspense um it, it's huge it pretty much every genre is covered i mean i would call twilight that's a thriller um, we have R.L. Stein, Goosebumps, uh, Goosebumps is on our board, because those are young thrillers. So, <laughs> yes, yes, and um, we, have, we, we, have, have, we actually have a category for nonfiction, too, because Black Hawk Down, Lone Survivor, those are all thrillers as well. So they just happen to be true stories. It's a huge umbrella, it's a huge umbrella. and everyone's welcome. Oh, that's amazing. The, um, and it's called, it, when is the next one? When is the next Thriller Fest? It's July 10th, it's July 10th through the 16th of this year, the, of week, this year. After, the week after 4th of July. That's fantastic. And uh, now, kind of on a, uh, changing gears a little bit, but you actually uh, did some work with the USO as an author. So, you know, you, you hear about singers and actors going to the USO, the USO, but you don't often hear about writers going to the USO. What, um, what, uh, what, what kind of uh, work did you do uh, with that organization? So, um, so um, what we do, um, I've done three tours with the USO. We have a partnership, International Thriller Writers, with the USO. And I've done two to the Middle East and one to Europe. And we go and we entertain the troops like any other you know, talent that they bring in. We do author events. Like if you were to go to a bookstore to an author event, you may see two authors um, 
either being interviewed or interviewing each other or, you know, and depending on the size of the base, we might be up on stage doing a more formal event or if it's a small base, I mean, I've been on the border of Iraq and those bases out there tend to be smaller. So we may be in a smaller room having a more informal event. Our troops are amazing. Um, we get to bring a touch of home to them and spend time with them. But also they have a lot of questions about writing and about our characters and about books and all the things that everybody else wants to know. But they have great stories to tell, and some of them want to write. So we often get a lot of craft questions, too, or how books become movies. Fantastic. So, so it's, 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 it's so much fun. I can only imagine, like, um, even just uh, when, I was, uh, when I was a pastor interacting with veterans, uh, I never got to, to meet active duty ser servicemen, sadly, but just interacting with veterans that I knew, it's such, a, it, it's such an amazing uh, opportunity and befriending them and, and learning from them, like you said. So I can only imagine traveling with the USO while that had to have been quite, quite an incredible experience. And our troops are amazing, and oftentimes they would do demonstrations for us. You know, they don't get to have take your child to work day, right? So they show us what they do. So and oh my gosh, between operating the robots to detonate IEDs to being on the flight line and the firemen who run into burning jets. I mean, it's, they are amazing people. Amazing. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kathleen. I appreciate your time. The book is Capital Offense. Where can people find it? It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon, and um, my last name's Antrim, A-N-T-R-I-M. So you can Google Kathleen Antrim, or you can Google Capital Offense, and it will definitely come up. I encourage all my viewers to do so. Kathleen, I want to thank you so much for participating. You've been a great sport. I've really enjoyed my uh, time with you. Thank you so much. I've thank really you so much. I've really enjoyed it as well.